Welcome to No Rules Gardening. My name is Jim Putnam. And I'm Bree Arthur, and we're here at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum in Raleigh, North Carolina, featuring some of our favorite spring flowering plants. That's right. We're going to cover, I think, three each uh, groups of plants. And uh, this has been a, a really interesting spring where things have things that are sometimes great at blooming in the spring have been incredible bloomers in the spring. We've been so lucky to not have the normal yo-yo weather that we have where we're warm in January and then cold in February. Okay. We've been consistently cool, never super cold, but never really warm. And this in 19 years of living in North Carolina is the first spring that actually reminds me of growing up in zone five. Yeah, that, that we've definitely had an extended spring. And I'm gonna start right here with one that's just been spectacular this year, the Laura Petalum. Okay, Laura Petalum. This is Carolina Moonlight. And I think when most people think about buying Laura Petalum, they're thinking about burgundy foliage varieties with pink and now even red flowers. But when I started in this business, all the Laura Petalum were, had green foliage and had white flowers and they got 25 feet tall. And then ones were introduced like burgundy that had a small amount of burgundy new growth on the outside of the plant, but the interior was green with pink flowers. And over 35 years, I've seen Laura Petalum shrink down to varieties that are literally ground cover varieties. And I've got, uh, this is uh, Carolina Moonlight with the white flowers. I've got Carolina Midnight at my house that has red flowers. And uh, I have a dwarf white variety as well. This season, I've never seen them uh, as full of flowers as they are. This extended period of time without a frost has, has just been, has been their friend. And again, uh, kind of exciting uh, over the course of my career in horticulture to see uh, the changes that have been made in Laura Petalum. I'm irrationally obsessed with Stachyurus precox. So this is also called the golden spike tail. And I know it's probably not a plant that you find at your local garden center. It's a collector's plant, but remember, I'm a plant nerd through and through, and I like unusual things. The Ralston Arboretum has a fabulous collection of these. They always show off in early spring with these long kind of dangling panicles of blooms. Now this is a variety that I'm not really sure how to say. Is it Isi, Isai? It's not Isaiah, we've established that. But one of my other favorite varieties is actually a variegated leaf form called Carolina Parakeet. And that was actually found as a branch sport here at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum by plant technician Tim Alderton. And I think that that is one of my all time favorite plants for interest in the spring. So second up on my list is the Magnolia collection here at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. And where the Magnolia grandifloras won't be blooming until later, our native magnolias to the southeast, all of the deciduous magnolias have just been spectacular this year. I came over and took photos of them recently, and then we had a thunderstorm. I clean a lot of them off, but there's still a few in the garden uh, that are still uh, in bloom now. And then we have hybrids that bloom early, like eternal spring behind me. So flowering cherries are obviously a sure sign that spring is happening. And often they bloom a little bit early and then they get either beat up with spring rains or they can get damaged in late frost. So the last few weeks, we've actually been in the midst of cherry season here in central North Carolina zone seven. But I was so excited to come across this green flowering cherry known as Prunus Yukon. This is an extraordinary plant that blooms several weeks later than many of the other common varieties, and it reliably roots on its own wood, so you don't need to graft this. This is on the top of my list for propagating this spring. So one of my favorite seasons of the year is upon us, and that's viburnum season. Uh, there are lots of early flowering viburnum here at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. This is Berkwood viburnum behind me. It's super fragrant, which is just amazing. A lot of people confuse 
uh, viburnum for hydrangeas in the spring, but what you're seeing in March, April, and May is typically viburnum flowering, and they're just better. They're fragrant, they tend to be disease resistant, they tend to flower regardless of, of, of late frost and freezes and, and winter temperatures, tend to be more disease and drought tolerant, uh, insect resistant, and just super underused ornamental plants in the landscape. Bree and I plan to later in the spring when some of them are flowering at her house to do an extensive viburnum tour. Red buds are awesome and you need them all, okay? Now I love all red buds, native, non-native, doesn't matter to me. Behind me here is Circus chinensis. This is the Chinese red bud. That's a really unique plant because it blooms several weeks before our North American native Circus canadensis. It also flowers on all of the stems all the way down to the base into the ground. Another great attribute of this particular species is that it's sterile, so it doesn't produce any seedlings. Now this plant was actually introduced by NC State and is named in honor of a longtime women's basketball coach, Kay Yao. This variety, Kay's Early Hope, is one that I think every gardener in zones six through nine should include in their collection. And here we have a beautiful white Circus chinensis, but the important thing to always pay attention to, because a lot of times red buds are grafted, you want to make sure that you don't allow the root stock to grow because that will overwhelm the desired variety. So in this case, these really tall, upright, purple flowering stalks are the understock, and those need to get trimmed down at the base so that all of the energy goes into the desired variety. Here we are flanked by the native redbud and the Chinese redbud. And one of the biggest distinguishing characteristics is their overall form. So you can see Circus chinensis tends to be shorter overall in its stature and multi-trunk compared to Circus canadensis, which is a single stem and growing significantly taller. It's the perfect understory tree. Yeah, it, it really is. So thank you guys for following along with our six uh, groups of flowering plants uh, for early spring. Don't forget to go over to norulesgardening.com and there'll be a blog post there uh, with more detail on each of these uh, groups of plants. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell notification so you're alerted when we upload a video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the garden. Like, what does Brie look like with bangs? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Actually, this would be the real bang plant. Right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I love this plant. It's so... Right. I'm irrationally obsessed with Stachyurus praecox. So this is commonly called the... Totally forgot the common name. Something spike tail, hang on. <laughs> really hard golden spike tail. <laughs> okay, that's an outtake. <laughs> I have a hungry belly yeah, and right. I want to get Mediterranean food. Yes. That's an outtake. Me jumping around talking for about food. For, for, for falafel. Yeah.